And a very early good morning to all you great ones out there. You are not gonna believe how this trip started out. Well, I already know what you're thinking. What the heck does a Cobra Mustang have to do with the Kentucky Adventure Trail? Well, that Cobra Mustang right there, guys, is my baby. I've had that car since it was brand spanking new in 1997. And 27 years later, and only 43,000 miles, it's headed to a new home in Kentucky. You see, that car is headed to some very good friends of mine. They're going to take good care of it. They're going to move it on from me to them. And they're going to treat that car the way it needs to be treated. So, what does that Mustang have to do with the Kentucky Adventure Trail? Everything. The reason we're headed to Kentucky is because of that car. I sometimes find that the last minute things that you don't really know or that you haven't planned for just make the adventure that much more exciting. You see, this trip did start out with a little bit of a bang and confusing and problems and all that such sort. I didn't really know where we were going to be staying the first night as we left Livingston rather late. Uh, we had intended on being on the road by 3 o'clock. Well, I decided to have all new tires put on the truck at the very last minute. So thanks to Discount Tire for getting those 39-inch BFGs put on in only 19 minutes. So we were still able to hit the road by 4 o'clock. I didn't know exactly how far we were going to make it though, so I just had to kind of plan that part of the trip on the fly. So I started looking for hotels and stuff along the way, figuring our time base and everything like that. So I got on my IHG app, I booked a hotel, I got a confirmation... Bam, we are on the road. We rolled into Texarkana about 10 o'clock at night. We go to check into the hotel and the guy says, I don't have a room for you. I said, well, that's funny because I have a confirmation. He says, well, too bad. I don't have that room, but I can give you two single rooms. I said, well, what the heck ever. Let's just take the room. So we paid for him again, started trying to figure out where to park this rig. We go back in, we talk to the guy. He says, oh, just go over to the mall. It's only a couple of hundred yards over there through the woods and stuff like that. You can leave your rig over there and walk back over here. I was like, are you crazy? There's no way I'm leaving this whole rig unattended in a mall parking lot at night. So we start driving around the hotel, checking out things, looking at parking area. You can't park on the street here. There's a Hilton right across the street and the parking lot was really big. So we made a pass through there. There was tons of parking available out by the, the street that was right across from our hotel room. So I got to looking around though and I'm like, why are all these people just sitting in their cars out here with the lights out on them? There was a lot of people that were just milling about in their cars. No lights on. They were parked in the very edge of the, the parking lot. It just seemed sketchy to me, and I just had that feeling in my stomach like something is not right. Like they're sitting there watching me as soon as I parked this rig. I told my wife, I was like, that's it. We're not staying here. Let's get back on the road. We just sucked it up, hit the road. We made it into Hope, Arkansas. I had made another reservation there on the way. We paid for yet again another room. That's three rooms now, guys. We go to check in. The attendant at the desk is no worries. Our parking lot is well lit. We have cameras everywhere. We have security constantly riding around in the parking lots. You're welcome to park anywhere you want. I felt much better. She handed us the keys. We made our way down to the room. The keys wouldn't work. They wouldn't let us in the room. <laughs> we go back up to the desk. She says, I'm so sorry. She reprograms them. We head them back down to the room. Still, no luck. We cannot get in the room, guys. What? Finally, she just comes and lets us in. She apologizes. It's no big deal. But it is well after 11 o'clock at night now. Uh, I did not intend on getting in this late. Everything turned out fine, and we finally hit the road. So let's get on with it and get to Kentucky so we can enjoy some Kentucky Adventure Trail. <laughs> Thank you. 
and welcome to the next screw up on this trip which uh, I'm just gonna say is entirely 100% my fault just to get that right off the get-go out there <laughs> so this river that we're crossing right now this is the Cumberland River which if you look it up it's actually quite interesting right over here off the bridge to the left is Cumberland Falls State Park now that is home to Cumberland Falls obviously but it is also called the Little Niagara now it is also one of only two places in the world where you can see a moonbow at night on the river. That only happens on special occasions. Uh, it has to be a full moon, no clouds. It only happens um, a very couple of few times a year. You kind of have to look on their schedule and engage it whenever the full moon is going to happen. But it's really awesome. Look it up. Cumberland Falls moonbow. So we're on the Cumberland Falls Highway here. And again, I say this is a screw up on my part because I should have paid more attention. I have been down this highway numerous times. Coming out of Somerset using Google Maps, this is the quickest way to get to our friend's house. Not even thinking about the fact that I am in a four-door jacked up truck pulling a trailer with a car on it. <laughs> and as you can see, it is a very curvy highway. There's no shoulders. Uh, anyways. It's a beautiful drive through here, but it just was not the funnest drive with the rig that I was actually driving. So I had to take it kind of slow at first to get kind of used to everything. And again, we're on 39s here. So um, I rocked it through here like a sports car before it's over with. I mean, you'd have thought I was drifting the trailer around the curves. I'll sit back, let you enjoy a little bit of the view, a little bit of the scenery. Yes, that's no one know, know it's raining. I apologize for that, but it's a beautiful drive. If you ever find yourself in Kentucky, in this area, make sure to come out here to the falls. Everything around here is so beautiful. The drive is great. The falls are absolutely drop dead gorgeous. There is so much to do in this area of Kentucky. Uh, a little bit of a spoiler. I think we're going to be moving, guys.
we made it. We got the truck and the trailer all situated, got everything unloaded, and we are ready to finally hit some trails. So, a little bit about the CAT, Kentucky Adventure Trail, even called the Kentucky 1000. Even though it's not quite a thousand miles, it's pretty darn close. It's a trail system of many names. It runs throughout pretty much the entirely of eastern Kentucky, almost a thousand miles, like I say, across the hills and the mountains. It's pretty much a mix of kind of some unimproved roads, some trails, some paved roads. Uh, the loop winds back and forth through the mountains. Like I say, it does cover most of central and southeastern Kentucky. It does also touch on West Virginia and it passes into Tennessee as well. It's a really awesome GPS based as you can see here we just downloaded a GPX file the Gaia you can use whatever you want Onyx Gaia anything that you can download these files to all those little dots all around that purple trail those are just all points of interest campgrounds different landmarks all kinds of stuff you can see arches out here there are caves plenty of mountainside trips there are cliffs to hang off of there are a ton of water crossings. It's a mix of everything out here, guys. It's an absolutely beautiful scenic drive through the mountains. It does use some regular highways a little bit here and there, but for the most part, it's pretty much dirt road. Nothing too wild. There's a couple of hard spots here and there, but everything has bypasses around it. I'm just going to give you a little read off of here, off of uh, just a little Google internet search. It says all throughout eastern Kentucky runs the Kentucky Adventure Tour more than a thousand miles across the hills and mountains. I, I don't think it's quite a thousand miles, folks. Anyways, a mix between a thousand miles of unimproved road, trail, and paved surfaces, the loop winds its way through almost entirely central and southeastern Kentucky and then wraps into the corners of West Virginia and Tennessee. There are plenty of updates done to the GPX files if you want to keep up with them. It passes through a lot of Appalachia uh, as well as some, like I say, some rocky ledges and a lot of water crossings, so pay attention to the weather. There are some rather deep water crossings that you can come across. Anyway, that's a little bit of history about the Kentucky 1000, the CAT, like I say, K-A-T, the Kentucky Adventure Trail, whatever you want to call it. If you are an outdoorsy person, an overlander, you should absolutely make your way up here to ride a little bit of this trail. I'm going to share with you some footage along the way that we took while we were riding it. And keep in mind, guys, this is just one day of riding on this trail, and we did not cover hardly any of it. Like I say, it's almost a thousand miles.
Now, we're going to make a little pit stop here off of the cat, off of the Kentucky Adventure Trail. This is a waterfall that we found a couple of years ago, and, well, we refer to it really as our secret waterfall. We have never marked it. We don't have a GPS position for it. We don't even actually ever even share it because we really don't want anybody to come out here and tear it up, deface it, paint all over the cliff walls down there. You can walk all the way down to the bottom of the valley down there to the bottom of the waterfall and you can actually stand behind it, underneath it, whatever you want to. Um, but anyway, we, we try to keep it secret because, well, you know how folks are, guys. They just tear up stuff. Uh, anyways, we got back on the trail here and we made another little pit stop off the off the adventure trail here to these arches right here. Uh, it's pretty cool. There's actually some double arches out here. We didn't go to the other one to take some pictures, but I did get a couple of pictures of uh, this one here. If you've followed along on the channel for a while now, and well, if you haven't, I would absolutely love to have you on board uh, for my life history, my life story here, our life's journey, but that is entirely up to you if you want to hit that subscribe button down there. But anyway, if you've followed along, you know my love for historical trains runs very deep. Um, and that goes along right here in Kentucky as well. You see, Kentucky and the railroad, well, they're hand in hand. The railroads have been part of Kentucky since, well, really in the inception of the state. And, well, Kentucky, the railroads, and coal mining runs really deep in this area. You see, most of the area that we've been driving around in today was once coal mines. Now, you can't tell it anymore. There's no nothing left of it except in parks or anything like that. All of the area has been reclamated. It's full of nothing but trees and forests and rivers. But we did make a stop off here at the Big South Fork um, Recreational Railroad Depot. <laughs> That's a lot to say. Now, this is home of the uh, the Big South Fork National River and Recreation Area. Beautiful area. They run a historical train from this depot down to Blue Heron, which is another park, once a coal mine. Now, Blue Heron is really cool as there is a lot of history. Uh, there's a lot of displays down there, a lot of coal mining equipment and everything like that. So you might want to check that off also as well. Blue Heron. Anyways. A lot to talk about here. I'm trying to get it over and done with really quick. Uh, this little site we stopped here is just a, um, a reenactment, a recreation of uh, a once thriving railroad depot. A lot of timber industry, a lot of coal mining went on here. But we wanted to stop in here and check out the exhibits and take a look at things. The train is not running right now, but uh, during peak season and holidays, they do run the train uh, back and forth between these two parks. They also do the uh, the Polar Express train ride, uh, you know, at Christmas. But we're going to get back on the road, and we are going to head over to another very historical train site here in the mountains of Tennessee. The road that we're traveling along here was formerly a set of railroad tracks. Um, you see this is the old railroad bed here and of course the tracks are long gone, but this was once the line for the O&W Railroad, which was the Oneida and Western Rail Line, uh, that ran through here from the very early 1900s through about the mid-1900s. We're going to head on down here towards the end of the road, though. well, not the end of the road really, but we're going to head down here to the big south fork of the Cumberland River where there is a very historical bridge uh, that has a lot to do with the, uh, the O&W rail line. So, welcome to the O&W Bridge, or short for the Oneida and Western Railroad Bridge. Now, this bridge here is crossing over the big south fork of the Cumberland River, just a little bit west of Oneida, Tennessee. Now, this bridge wasn't always here. This bridge actually began construction in the 1880s, but it was for a different rail line in a different location. In 1915, the Nashville Bridge Company disassembled the bridge and moved it here to its current location to cross the Big South Fork 
and reassembled it and renamed it as the O&W Bridge or the O&W Railroad. This line here that we were driving on formerly was a, a, a rail line that ran between Oneida, Tennessee and Jamestown, Tennessee. Now, construction of this rail line here uh, began November 4th, 1913, and of course the bridge was completed here in 1915, and the rail line actually reached East Jamestown by 1930. Now, at its peak, the O&W actually featured three daily passenger round trips that ran between Oneida and Jamestown. It was all geared around the coal and the lumber industry, but it still was used to move passengers as well as products out of the mining and the logging camps here that were just west of the river. The railroad began to decline really by the 1930s and well with the advent of passenger cars and of course roadways and more efficient means of transportation and everything like that. Unfortunately, the last train to ever run through here was March 31st, 1954. After that, everything was gone. They pulled up all the tracks, the railroad bed laid here abandoned for a very long amount of time, the bridge actually came into disrepair, and there was actually talk of just completely tearing it down and just abandoning the rail line altogether. But locals around here uh, started a petition, um, they wanted to save the bridge and the line, and they ended up giving a, uh, getting a grant where they did completely reconstruct the bridge. And it is actually, uh, you can actually drive across this bridge. It only goes about another, I don't know, mile and a half, maybe three miles tops, and it does go ahead and dead end. And the rest of the railroad bed continues running under the mountains, although it's not maintained like this. It's not a road or anything like that. It's uh, merely just used for hiking and equestrians. I think we're going to need a bigger winch. Be an awesome camping spot literally right here at the railroad bridge right above the river You can see the gravel right here. Yeah, don't look too back you can see it over there. Just inside do I stay for the most part against where they stacked up or just go that way? I can see yeah. I can see rocks all in there. So I think it's it's basically follows that you can see yeah. right here. Yeah. So it kind of just follows that curve. 
curvature of that rock. Guys, that's going to do it for us on this adventure of this little tiny section of the Kentucky Adventure Trail. Um, you see we're crossing over the creek right here. And yes, to the right there, that is the entrance to the very famous Muddy Mile. Uh, you can look it up. It's, uh, it, it's literally exactly what it says. It is a mile of nothing but mud pits, holes, ruts, bogs. The absolute epitome of everything that I hate. So we're not going to be doing the Muddy Mile today at all. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Everything you see here uh, in the next clip as well is nothing but campsites that are all along the river here. We are back on the actual Kentucky Adventure Trail here. So this is another campsite we just stopped to check out right here along the side of the river. Beautiful area. Beautiful. I encourage everybody, uh, sometime you should really take off and ride the Kentucky Adventure Trail. But like I say, that's it for us. We really appreciate you coming along. We appreciate you watching. Thank you to all you subscribers for returning. And like I said, if you're not subscribed, well, it's entirely up to you. You want to push the button and come along with us? That'd be great. We're going to finish out our evening here with a little drive up to the top of the mountain on an overlook. That is looking down over Jellicoe, Tennessee right there. Beautiful town as well. It's a hop-off point for the Kentucky Adventure Trail as well. So... We started out this morning way up northern Kentucky, and we have ended up down here on the border around Jellicoe, Tennessee. See you guys on the next one.